in the last class we presented semantic tablux method which is due to uh, three logicians it is originated uh, in the works of Beth and then uh, later it was uh, simplified by Raymond Smullyan and you will find the same kind of work in the work of uh, Hintika in his work modal sets. So there, are, uh, there seems to be one of the same. So semantic tablux is a very interesting and important method uh, uh, with which you will come to know uh, whether or not a given well form formula is valid when two groups of statements are consistent to each other or when two statements or two well form formulas are logically equivalent to each other etc. So in continuation to the last class so we discussed about some rules with which you know there are alpha rules and beta rules and then uh, we, we have also said that there is some kind of strategy which we will be adapting in the process of using this particular method that is this that so whenever you come across a, a non branching formula first you, you have to utilize this thing first and then use branching formulas and all. So now in continuation to the last class we will be talking about some definitions in the context of the semantic tablux method. So in the semantic tablux method so these are some of the definitions that we will be following in a way indirectly we discussed all these things but uh, in a more formal way we will be defining these uh, terms. The first and foremost important thing is what we call it as path of a tree. So what we are simply trying to do is given a well formed formula we are trying to construct it upside down kind of tree and then we are trying to see uh, whether or not a given well formed formula is valid or consistent uh, when two groups of formulas are consistent etc. So a path of a tree is a complete column of formulas from top to bottom of the tree. So then that is considered to be the path of the tree for example if you have uh, this particular kind of thing this is the root this is upside down kind of tree a tree will be looking like this these are all branches and this is a trunk but in, in our case it will be like this. So the it is an upside down kind of tree so now suppose if you have a formula like this and then this and then this leads to this branch leads to three more branches like this and for example this leads to this. So now uh, we have a given well formed formula here and then this is considered to be the root that is where this your well formed formula will be sitting and then it is reduced reduced into some kind of atomic variables p q s r which cannot be further reduced. So that is why these are called as atomic propositions at the end of this uh, brand, uh, this path you will end up with only atomic sentences. So now in this uh, tree diagram this is considered to be one path and there is one more path it is going like this and there is one more path this is the third path like that you know this is considered to be a path of this particular kind of tree once you construct a tree for a given well formed formula and that is going to be the path this is a complete column of all the formulas from top to bottom top is the root and uh, the bottom is uh, usually ends up with uh, some kind of atomic sentences because atomic sentences you cannot apply any uh, you cannot further apply any rules so that is why uh, it remains uh, uh, at the end of the node as atomic sentences once you come across atomic sentences we will stop uh, constructing the tree. So the other definition is the finished path that means the closed path a path which is considered to be finished if it is said to be closed especially if it is closed when a propositional variables are its negation of the variables exist in the branch. So if x and not x exists the branch closes or the other way the branch uh, remains uh, it cannot be further extended is this that if it ends with uh, some kind of uh, atomic variab uh, variables atomic sentences p q r's etc then no further rules can be applied on this p's q's r's etc. So that is why the path ends there itself. So you will be working you will be using alpha and beta rules till to such an extent that you will end up with only atomic propositions either that is the case or you may come across some kind of concreting information that is it is considered to be a literal and its negation exists then usually you put a mark like this that means the branch closes here. So when the concreting information 
exists the branch closes or when you are ending up with uh, atomic propositions there are no further rules which you can apply that means the tree cannot be extended further it stops there itself. So that means a tree is said to be closed or finished if all its paths are closed that means you will be checking all the formulas you will list out all the well formed formulas 1, 2, 3 etc and all you keep checking those formulas using alpha beta rules and construct a tree and if all the formulas are checked and then you will end up with only atomic propositions the, then there is no nothing else you can do I think you cannot extend that tree further it stops there itself because you have exhausted all the rules and other things and you ended up with atomic sentences and that is considered to be finished path or the other way of saying that it is a finished path is, is that when you have a conflicting information once you check all the well formed formulas then also it is considered to be a finished path. So now an open path is a path that has not been ended with uh, that mark x or a closed path is a one uh, path that has been ended with an x. So this means uh, this particular kind of thing. So suppose if you have some formula p r q and uh, q implies r for example. So now you start constructing applying alpha and beta rules first you apply on this one so this is q r and then you apply uh, since this is checked so you, you have put tick mark here and then so what you will be doing is you will be checking this formula and then this is p r q and now each branch you need to write this information. So now uh, so all these branches are open. So there is no conflicting information you know. so this uh, whenever you have a conflicting information q and not q you put this mark x mark so that means this, this branch cannot be further extended it closes here itself. So this is considered to be a closed path so now we have exhausted all the rules and all so that means the final uh, final formulas that exist in your tree are going to be only atomic propositions so so this is one thing which uh, will be noted so we are defining what we mean by closed path and a open path etc and all so whenever you do not come across the mark x it is considered to be open path whenever uh, it is uh, whenever you come across uh, a mark x that means there is a conflicting information you you mark it with x so these are some of the definitions. So these are some of the definitions uh, that we will be using. So another definition is this that a formula occurs on a path if it is on the path and it is not merely a sub formula of some other formula on that path or second it is unchecked. So if you once you check the formulas and all it goes it gets exhausted so it cannot be further used so that means either the formula should be unchecked or if, you, if it is checked and you should end up with only atomic propositions and uh, here is an important strategy which one will be using that strategy is, is that first you apply non branching rules before the branching rules one example could be for example if you have a formula p and q and you have a formula p implies q let us say p r q implies r for example so now uh, first you need to apply non branching rule so non branching rule can be like this so these are some of the rules uh, alpha and beta rules the branching non branching rules are like this that means uh, the formula does not lead to some kind of branch so this is a non branching rule or this is also another kind of non branching rule suppose if not of p implies q is simply p and not q. So usually these two are considered to be a non branching rules another one is if you have a negation of negation of p and you will get p. So now here the strategy here is to use this non branching rules first either you can use this or that suppose if you open it open this first it leads to so many branches then um, it, it, it gives us excessive information and also better to use non uh, branching rules first you expand this one so p and q is simplifies to p q so this is one simplification etc one simplification and then again we are not supposed to use this one because it leads to branch it is p r q implies r so 
better exhaust this particular kind of thing. So now this is P and not Q. So this is a strategy one adopts in this particular kind of technique. First, you use non-branching rules. I mean, those formulas that doesn't lead to branch are the ones which needs to be taken into consideration. So now, as you clearly see here, so now you have a Q and not Q and all. This closes here itself. So now it doesn't matter whether or not you use this particular kind of formula and all. P R Q implies R etc. So the branch closes here itself. So this is considered to be a proof for a particular thing that these three statements are inconsistent to each other. Are inconsistent to each other. So that's why all the branches closes. It doesn't matter what formula is there in the third kind of thing. For however, suppose if you have used branching rules first. Here is the problem which comes to uh, for the thing and all. The same formula which we have taken into consideration. So now this is the correct way of applying this thing. Non-branching rules first. First we have used non-branching rule. So now instead of that we have used branching rule first. Then here is the problem. The problem is like this. Now instead of expanding these two formulas, instead of checking these formulas first, you are trying to check this particular kind of formula. So now this leads to P Q implies R. So now we can use any other formula and all P and Q. So now this is the one which we have used, both are checked. So now this needs to be expanded. So now P and Q needs to be added on both sides. So now you check these two formulas. Now you yourself will see that when you use branching rules first, uh, although you are you can use a non-branching rules here, this leads to the problem. The problem is is that first of all, the, the whatever you are trying to show will have more number of steps, or if you are suppose if you are showing to sh if you are showing the validity of a given formula, it involves more steps. So now this ended in seven steps itself. With seven steps. You could say that these three statements are inconsistent to each other, but here there are already four, five, six, and then you have seven here, and there will be some more. So now you need to write this one also. So P and not Q. So now here it is P and not Q, P and not Q. So now here you have eight, nine, or something like that. So instead of seven steps, you have nine steps and all. So that is the reason why. So we will always be using non-branching rules first when compared to this branching kind of rules in a semantic tableaux tree. This is a very important strategy which comes through practice. So it's a convention which logicians follow. So always, whenever you have a non-branching formula, better to open it up rather than a branching kind of formula. Because it in, it involves more number of steps now. So in fact, the semantic tableaux method can also be used as some kind of uh, proof method, proof procedure kind of method. A proof is a one uh, which consists of finite number of steps and which ends in finite intervals of interval of time. Uh, no proof can be considered to be an effective proof if, if it never ends in uh, it goes on and on and on and on. So a proof has to end in finite steps. Of course, it should take a finite number of a finite amount of time. Then it is considered to be an effective kind of proof. But you know, once once you start with non-branching rules, of course, you will get the answer and all. But the number of steps will be more. Informational economy cannot be maintained if you use branching rules first over non-branching rules. That is the reason why we follow this particular kind of strategy. That is always apply non-branching rules before. The branching rules. So now we defined all these things in the context of truth table method. For example, a formula is valid, especially when uh, when you have true premises and you don't find a false conclusion. As long as you do not find a true premises and a false conclusion, then obviously the formula is going to be valid. So you have to inspect uh, in the truth table all the rows, and uh, if there is any row in which you have Premises are true, and the conclusion is false. Then the argument is invalid. And in the same way, 
a formula is said to be satisfiable especially when you need to inspect at least one row in which your premises uh, at least in one of the uh, under the main logical connective at least you have one T if all if there are all T's and all then it is said to be unsatisfiable the group of statements are unsatisfiable or inconsistent. So now uh, the same things which we will define in the context of semantic tableaux method so that is first if you want to determine whether a formula is valid one needs to construct a tree using all the alpha beta rules that we have been discussing so far first what we will be doing is you take the premises into consideration and the negation of the conclusion if all the paths closes then the formula is considered to be valid if it is not then it is going to be invalid some examples which we take into consideration and then we will see when a given formula uh, I mean when the conclusion follows from the premises and all that means the validity some simple examples can be like this P implies Q implies R let us consider this one Q and from that you got Q implies R so these are considered to be premises and this is separated by an hyphen this is considered to be the conclusion so now in the semantic tableaux method in order to show that Q implies R follows from P implies Q implies R and P what you will be doing is first you deny the conclusion so that means you need to write here denial of conclusion once you deny the conclusion now you will be constructing uh, the tree diagram for this thing and then you need to see whether all the branches closes or not so now as usual we follow we apply non branching rule first so that means you need to open up this one so this is Q and not R so this is 3 when simplifies it got it gets simplified and then you will get Q and not R so now we check this formula so that is why we had put this mark so now you open up this thing this is an atomic sentence you need not have to do much so now we need to open up this one P implies Q implies R so now this is a branch because uh, you have a formula X implies Y X implies Y the construction tree for this one is not X and Y so now this is not P and Q implies R is as it is so now you have P here and not P here this branch closes so now we need to expand this thing a little bit further so this will Q implies R will become again this rule you use X implies Y is not X Y so now this becomes Q implies R becomes this one not Q R so now you have Q and not Q is a conflicting information this branch closes and you have R here and you have not R here this also branch also closes so what is that we got simply this that negation of the conclusion leads to branch closure that means it is unsatisfiable that means it leads to a contradiction I mean uh, all the branches closes then negation of X is uh, this one then X has to be T where this stands for board is always false the so formulas which are always false and this T this is totally different from the formula that we use small t so this is this stands for truth of course this is also considered to be true but it is always true and all so this is the symbol is represented as top so that means X is a tautology X is a tautology that is what we have said that means the actual conclusion is the one which stands because we negated the conclusion and led to contradiction and all so that is why we have to retain the original conclusion that is Q implies R so negation of Q implies R leads to contradiction and all that means Q implies R has to be true Q implies R is the true conclusion of these two premises so it is in this way one can show a given um, from uh, when when a conclusion follows from the premises that means the validity for validity what you need to do simply is this that you take the negation of the conclusion and see whether all the branches closes if all the branches closes then the negation of the conclusion is false that means the actual conclusion stands up as it is so if the negation of the conclusion does not lead to a branch closure then that means there are at least some kind of interpretations which satisfies uh, your truth uh, premises are true and the conclusion is false you know. that means you already constructed a counter model so that is the reason why this semantic tableaux method 
uh, one of the, the one of the essence of this semantic tableaux method is to look for some kind of counter models here we could not come up with any counter model that's why the argument is valid so the another way of showing a particular kind of argument is valid or invalid is simply this thing suppose if there are two formulas a and b and b is a logical consequence of a or this a implies a, a logically implies b as valid it is sufficient to show that a and not b is unsatisfiable so if you want to say that for example so this is the one which we want to see so now let us take a formula a as p and q and then b as something like not p or not p not q something like there is two formulas on the one hand you have this and you have this one so now if you want to show that this this is a logical consequence of this one what you need to do is first you need to write like this not p or not q and then you construct a tree for this one and then this becomes not p or not q and in all the branches it becomes uh, it the branch closes and all but that is not what we are trying to say so what we are trying to show is this particular kind of thing so p and q and not of not p or not q if this remains unsatisfiable then so this is a logical consequence of this one but actually that is not the case so now you expand this one it becomes p and q not not p is p not not q is q and negation of disjunction is conjunction so now this branch is open it satisfies this particular kind of thing that means this is not a uh one second uh p and not q has to be unsatisfiable uh, for showing that uh, this particular kind of argument is valid otherwise it is considered to be uh, uh invalid so that is uh, another way of showing that uh, um, whether or not a given formula uh, is uh, valid or invalid so what we are trying to do do is uh, a logically implies b that means b is a logical consequence of a so a is considered to be premises and b is considered to be conclusion suppose if you can come across at least uh, true premises and a false conclusion and obviously the argument is invalid so uh, another thing which we can do with the help of the semantic tableaux method is you can show whether two sets of formulas or two given formulas are consistent to each other or not for that what you need to do is you list out all the formulas and then construct a tree when at least one branch is open then it is considered to be consistent if all the branches closes then it is considered to be inconsistent and there is another way of saying that a given formula is a tautology a formula is considered to be tautology that means always true if and only if not a is unsatisfiable so that is this particular kind of thing so what we are trying to say here is this thing so you take a, any formula p implies q implies p this is what is the formula which is given to us so now according to the definition if you want to show that this particular formula is a tautology so what you need to show is this thing not of x is unsatisfiable unsatisfiable in a sense that if you take the negation of this one all branches should close so now that is what we are trying to see not of x is this one p implies q implies p so this is denial of original well formed formula the given well formed formula so now this has to be unsatisfiable that means all the branches should close after applying alpha beta rules so now this is one formula this is another formula x and y so not of x implies y is x and not y so now you construct a tree for this one this becomes q implies p so now this further reduces to q and not p so now you have p here and not p here conflicting information the branch closes here so that means negation of the formula leads to the branch closure all the branches closes here there is only one branch here this is the path like this 
so this branch closes so that means it is considered to be unsatisfiable if at least one branch is open in uh, in the construction of your tree of a given formula then it is said to be satisfiable but in all the branches there is only one branch here that closes here so that means not of x is said to be unsatisfiable if not of x is considered to be unsatisfiable then obviously the given formula is considered to be tautology and you need to note that all tautologies are obviously valid formulas so this is a relation between satisfiability and validity uh, validity that means the tautology so something is uh, considered to be a tautology only when the negation of the uh, formula is considered to be unsatisfiable so if the negation of x is considered to be satisfiable then it is not considered to be a tautology first of all it may be a contingent statement or it can be maybe even con contradiction as well so we cannot say that a given formula is considered to be valid so based on the information that negation of the given formula is satisfiable so we have to ensure that not a is unsatisfiable then only you can say that a is a kind of valid formula or it is all valid formulas are obviously tautologies so other thing which you can do with the help of semantic tableaux method is this thing, contingency so we have defined uh, statements into statements of propositional logic into three categories tautologies which are always true contradictions which are always false and contingent statement which can be sometimes true sometimes false so for this we need to construct two different trees one is to test whether uh, test for the consistency another one is to test for the validity so if the formula is consistent but not valid then it is said to be contingent for example if you have a formula uh, like this a formula like this thing for example p implies q or uh, not p or something like that so now this is the formula that we have so now what you do is you negate this formula and then see whether all the branches close that means not of x is unsatisfiable that is what we are trying to show so now this is if you expand this thing use alpha beta rules and all beta rule which you need to apply and this becomes q or not p so now this is uh, not q and not p so this closes that means it is uh, considered to be a tautology you know so now let us take another example where the branches does not close so now this example could be p or q implies r implies something like uh, yes some formula you take into consideration whatever comes to my mind that I am writing it on this thing so now we want to see whether it is a contingent or tautology or contradiction so for this again you deny the original formula and start constructing a tree so now you write the same thing here brackets needs to be written clearly so this is one formula this is another formula so now this can be written as p plus q plus r not s because not of x in plus y is x and not y so now you further expand this thing then this becomes p r q and r so this is the one which this further simplifies to not p not q and you will observe that all the branches remains open that means negation of the given formula does not lead to branch closure that means not x is not unsatisfiable so that means definitely it is not a tautology this particular formula is not a tautology so since uh, uh, if at least one branch is uh, remains open so then it is considered to be uh, a kind of contingent kind of state so we need to ensure that this is uh, this is not unsatisfiable if it, once it is not unsatisfiable then we can clearly say that it is it can be called as a contingent kind of statement so for contingency what you need to do is you have to consider two different trees so one is to test for the consistency and the other one is to test the validity so the one which we have mentioned it here is uh, on the left hand side of the board is uh, we have checked for the validity of a given formula so that is one test which we are trying to do definitely it is uh, considered to be an invalid kind of formula so now for contingency there is another thing which we need to follow so that is now here we showed that 
it is uh, not x is not unsatisfiable that means it is this formula is not a tautology not a tautology uh, but uh, and obviously it is invalid now so this is not enough because there are it can be a contradiction it can be even contingent statement so now what you need to do here is instead of negating this formula uh, you need to check this formula for the consistency for consistency what you will be doing is you do not take negation into consideration just you leave the formula as it is and then you start constructing a tree for this one. So now this becomes like this this is x this is y so not x and y so now this also changes so now this changes to this is not p or q now this further simplifies to this one so and uh, this is the whole thing which we need to take into consideration negation of this one and s yes. so now negation of p r q implies r is this thing p r q and not r so now p r q simplifies to this one so now all the formulas are uh, open I mean all the branches are open that means it is considered to be consistent kind of formula. So this formula is definitely not valid it is not a tautology but definitely it is not a contradiction also because uh, because at least all the branches are open and all. So now for example in the process of checking the consistency you came across all the closed branches and all then this formula is going to be a contradiction. So the idea here is this that for contingency you need to construct two different trees first you need to check the validity of a given formula that tells us whether a given formula is a tautology or not but it does not tell us about whether it is a contradiction or a contingent kind of statement for contingency and contradiction you need to go for another test that is the test for the consistency for consistency you do not deny the conclusion but you just leave the formula as it is and you construct the tree as in the case of that is explained on the left hand side of the board. So suppose imagine a situation where uh, in which uh, all the branches closes that means the formula is said to be inconsistent. So if it is inconsistent obviously that formula is going to be a contradiction but we did not come across that particular kind of situation at least one branch is open that is considered to be satisfiable. So this formula the one which we have written on the board p r q implies r implies s is considered to be a contingent kind of formula it is not a contradiction because in the process of checking the consistency the branch does not closes the all the branches does not close so it is not a contradiction and for the tautology we already checked it in the beginning that you know negation of the formula leads to the closure of branch that all the branches that means not x is unsatisfiable that also we did not get, uh, get it so it is not a tautology. Uh, and not a con contradiction so it is considered to be a contingent kind of formula. So here is, that is the way in which you can test you can check the contingency of a given formula you need to construct two different trees. So now here are some of the interesting and important theorems which will be using it further when we talk about uh, something on uh, meta logic that means uh, theorems uh, we will be discussing about some important theorems later. So one of the interesting theorems is this thing we are not going into the details of proving this theorems but we are just highlighting one of the important theorems which we will be making use of it later in another context I will be explaining these theorems in greater detail. So a completed semantic tab tabla for a given formula A is said to be closed if and only if A is said to be unsatisfiable. So you take the negation of the formula not x and then it leads to the closure of all the branches then obviously not x is considered to be unsatisfiable if not x is going to be unsatisfiable then obviously x has to be a tautology. So that is one thing which we have observed it already and the second most important thing is uh, the soundness theorem in the context of semantic tablux method. So in the context of semantic tablux method soundness is like this if the tableau is closed then obviously a is said to be unsatisfiable that means you have a formula x and you construct a tabla for that and if all the branches closes then A is said to be unsatisfiable. So usually it is the case that soundness relates there are few things which is important in propositional logic that is 
uh, in the con uh, we, we have not discussed in detail about something about proof theory we will talk about talking about it in the next few classes. So, if something is uh, uh, considered to be true then if it is also provable or something is provable and it is also true then it is something is provable and it is true it is called as uh, uh, soundness and then if something is uh, already true then it has to find a proof then that is considered to be completeness and all whatever is provable is true and whatever it is true has to be provable. And uh, interestingly in the propositional logic in both the cases it happens all the true formulas are all provable and all the provable formulas obviously at the end of the day has to be true you proved lots of things but at the end of the day it is false and it does not make any sense to us. So that means all provable formulas are true and all true formulas are provable and propositional logic in this sense is considered to be complete completeness says that if a well formed formula is unsatisfiable then any tabla for A is obviously closed you can show that uh, all the branches closes and one of the important corollaries of these two theorems which we will be explaining it little bit later uh, just we are just highlighting what we mean by these theorems and all uh, a well formed formula A is considered to be satisfiable formula if and only if any tabla for A is open if at least one branch is open it is considered to be satisfiable and in the same way corollary 2 is this that a well formed formula A is said to be a valid formula if and only if the tabla for not A you consider a tabla for not A and it so happens that all the branches closes if that is the case then it is considered to be a valid formula. So soundness in the context of tabla method is simply like this if alpha is tabla provable then obviously alpha is considered to be a tautology what is tabla provable so you have a given formula x and you negate the formula and it leads to all the closure of all the branches that means not x is false that means x has to be true. So if alpha is tabla provable then obviously alpha has to be that given formula has to be a tautology if something is provable and it is true then it is called as a sound soundness and all. So the tabla method is also considered to be consistent in a sense that while proving certain theorems using tablox method it never happens that you come across a you prove both alpha and not alpha and all. So either it has to be the case that you have to prove only alpha or it has to be the case that you have to prove only not alpha. So now the soundness of tabla method is like this if alpha is provable in the natural deduction system which we will be talking about a little bit later then alpha is also considered to be tautology natural deduction method is the one which in which you will find this proofs of some given formulas and all the same thing which you can prove it with the help of semantic tablox method as well. So if something is provable then it has to be true and something is true it has to be provable and the system is considered to be complete. So so far we discussed about semantic tablox method and then we uh, talked about when a given formula is valid consistent satisfiable and all these things. So now where we will apply this uh, semantic tablox method. So one of the important uh, uh, things uh, which we will be making use of this semantic tablox method is solving some kind of puzzles. So here are some of the interesting puzzles which are cooked up by Raymond Smullyan and Raymond Smullyan has come up with uh, various books all his books are quite interesting it includes lots of puzzles. One of the interesting books are uh, like this the title of the book is what is the name of the book uh, that is a, that itself is considered to be the title of the book and the other book is lady or tiger and lots of other books where he discussed all these puzzles and he tries to solve these things using the principles basic principles of logic. A few puzzles which we will take up in this class and then we will end this lecture and all. So here is an interesting puzzle which is called as knights and knaves puzzles. These puzzles can be solved by using semantic tablox method or it can be solved by using truth table method. So the puzzle is puzzle goes like this the story behind the puzzle is like this. So on some island there are two inhabitants one always speaks truths they are considered to be knights and there are some other kinds of inhabitants where they always lies for example if you ask a particular kind of inhabitant is 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 then if he is a knight he will tell that the answer is yes if he is a knave he will tell that is 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 
if he is an A we will answer that no, so that means he always lies I mean whatever truths are there you will always say it is not the case. So now that is a particular kind of island that means cleverly designed in such a way that they speak only true and false everything is crystal clear black and white either something a sentence is either true or false. So that is an island where you will be going. So now you went to that particular island is all an imaginary kind of situation so they are all stories but a lot of things can be done with the help of this particular kind of things. So now you meet two islanders let us call them A and B now you hear the first one saying that at least one of us is a knave. So now can you tell whether the islanders are knights or knaves based on whatever information that the person is trying to give. So what is happening here is, is that you are a stranger you visited that particular kind of island and then you are trying to question this you are trying to ask some questions so that you will get a definite yes or no kind of answers and with the help of those answers which you are trying to judge whether they are knights or knaves. So for solving this kind of knights and knaves problems the first thing which you need to note is some kind of notation. So what we are discussing is knights and knaves puzzles using either truth table or semantic tablox method. Some simple problems which we will be considering and then we will move on to some kind of difficult kind of problems. So now uh, so this is an island so there are only two kinds of inhabitants A and so now suppose if A is a knight then you represented it like this only uh, so A is knight in the same way suppose if I write simply letter B that means B is knight suppose if you write like this not A that means A is a knave and not B means B is a knave so now so there are some particular kind of problems the problem here is this thing so now you are a stranger you know you visited this island now you are trying to know what they are so you ask some questions and all this is what they tell you hear the first one says at least one of us is a knave the first one is A so now what is the thing A says at least one of us is a knave this is the information that uh, A gives so now you are a stranger you went to this particular kind of island now you are trying to decide whatever answers that they give you are trying to decide what type they are you do not know whether A is a knight or B is a knight and all but based on the information that they give you you will be drawing some kind of conclusion. So these are some kind of reasoning problems which you can solve it with various number of uh, numerous methods and all but uh, since we have uh, you know, studied semantic tableaux method and truth table method in greater detail so we will be talking about this particular kind of method. So now uh, A says X some X that means you will be saying uh, uh, one of us is a knave or uh, some other kind of thing you know. so this can be represented as a by kind by implication and this is represented as A if and only if X. So now the first problem that we will be solving is this particular kind of thing you went to an island and then you came across two inhabitants uh, instead of both are talking the first person A is saying that at least one of us is a knave so from that what you can judge about A and B so now this uh, at least one of us is a knave uh, can be translated as it is usually uh, translated as inclusive R. so that is uh, P R Q suppose if they, have, if they have said exactly one of us is a knave then it is considered to be a, an exclusive R that is either A has to be the case or B has to be the case but not both of them that gives us information about exactly one of us is a knave but usually at least one of us is a knave is usually translated as inclusive R that is P R so now this formula reduces to this particular kind of thing so now what it says at least one of us is a knave so that means A is saying that means A if and only if A 
this one it says that at least one of us is new that means either A has to be new or B has to be a new. So now we need to construct a semantic tableaux for this particular kind of thing then we can come to know what is A and what is B. So what is what is happening here you went to a strange island you ask them they do not tell uh, about anything but they will say this particular kind of thing at least one of us is a name from that you need to judge what they are. So now this is the information that A is trying to give at least one of us is a name. So now you need to see when this formula is going to be satisfiable that is going to give us the answer for this particular kind of thing whether A is a A or B is a knight etc all this information is hidden in this one. So now you construct a semantic tableaux for this one for example if we have a formula X implies Y so this is either X Y is a case X and Y is a case or not X and not Y so this is the tree for this particular kind of thing. So now you draw semantic tableaux for this one this is A and not A or B not B and then the second one is not A not of not A or not B. So now you further expand it then this becomes not A and not B and here so not of not A is A not of negation of disjunction is conjunction that is why you write it just below this one and now this becomes B. So now we need to see whether there is any conflicting information in the branch. So now you have A here and not A here this branch closes and this branch remains open and now you have A here and not A here this branch closes. So now when this formula is going to be satisfiable I mean especially when you need to inspect the open branch the open branch is only this one in this open branch the information that we have is A and not B. So you have A here and not B here that satisfies this particular kind of formula when A is T and B is false and this makes the whole formula true and this is the one which we are looking for and according to our original interpretation if you write only A and all that means A is a knight and then if you write not B then B has to be a knave. So the solution of this one is this thing A is a knight and B is a name. So this is uh, the solution for this particular kind of problem. So when somebody tells that at least one of us is a knave then uh, then this has to be the solution. Suppose if you had said uh, that at least exactly one of us is a knave and all that means one is ruling out the other possibility and all. So then you need to write in a different way. So this will become like this. So not only this is uh, uh, the case and all exactly one of the uh, things are knights or and it is not the case that both are knaves and all not A and not B. So this also you need to take into consideration that means one excludes the other possibility then you need to draw the semantic tableaux for this one and then you can see whether or not uh, the open branch is the one which you need to inspect then you can see. Uh, the corresponding answer for this particular kind of problem. So now let us consider some more examples of this sort of one uh, and we will see what can be done with this particular kind of thing. So now uh, let us consider that uh, this is the one which we will be considering. So this is the one which, which can be solved with the help of uh, truth table method also. So this is like this you have PQ and not P or Q is uh, stands for at least one of us is a knave and then P implies not P or not Q is the one which you need to see because P is saying this particular kind of statement. So now at least uh, if it should be by implication and that is the correct one but uh, you have to inspect a row in which uh, this formula is satisfiable that means that the second row is the one which uh, satisfies this particular kind of formula that means uh, P has to be T and Q has to be F that satisfies this particular kind of formula. So using truth table method also you can solve this particular kind of problem. So let us consider some more examples and then uh, we will see um, what is the situation. 
So these are some of the notations that we will be following in solving this uh, particular kind of uh, puzzles. So you meet uh, two kinds of people A and B suppose if A says I am a knave but B is not let us consider that particular kind of thing. So A is saying uh, A is saying this particular kind of thing I am a knave but B is not I am a knave but B is not that means B is a knight. So now from this information what what is the one which you you are trying to get so now again you construct a, a semantic tableaux method uh, using semantic tableaux method you construct a tree for this one so first it is a not b and then this is not of not a and b so now this is uh, this branch closes here itself because not a and b because a and not a it closes here itself and now this can be expanded to this thing. this is a not not A is A and then this is not B. So now this branch also closes again this is the information that we have. So A is a knave and B is also considered to be a knave and all. Suppose if you say this particular kind of thing that I am a knave but B is not the case. So then it has to be the thing that both of them are knaves. Suppose if in the second problem suppose if A says if I am a knight so is B then can we determine what are uh, this thing again the same thing which we will be using so with this I think we will end this class so the other one is like this if A says A says the second problem it is like this A says means A if and only if uh, this thing uh, if I am a knight that means A is a knight then uh, then so is B that means B is also knight and all. So this is the formula uh, we can translate that uh, statement into this particular kind of formula A implies A implies single implication B. So now again you construct a semantic tableaux method using semantic tableaux method you construct a tree for this one and this becomes A implies B and then not A exactly in the negation of this one. So now this further expands to not A and B because A and not A this branch closes and then this branch remains open now this is A and not B so this branch closes now open branches are the ones which you need to inspect that means you have A here that means A is a knight and B is a knight that means suppose if you went to an island a strange island and you ask them a particular kind of inhibitant replies by saying that if I am a knight then so is B and from that information uh, if that has to be translated into appropriate language of propositional logic then this is the formula with which it can be translated into and then you constructed a tree and then you are observing the open branches and then the open branches corresponds to the answer that is A has to be knight and B has to be a knight to satisfy this particular kind of statement is statement. So in this way uh, suppose if you are making some kind of sample uh, statistical survey that how many number of uh, uh, people are knights how many number of people are knaves etc then uh, you need to translate the given formula in appropriately into the language of propositional logic and then you construct a semantic tableaux method and then you can see whether or not whether they are knights or knaves. So uh, let us consider one last example and then here we have three inhibitants A, B, C uh, one of them uh, each of whom it can be a knight it can be knave or it can be it cannot be both and all and other impo important thing which you need to note is, is that a liar cannot tell truths and all if that is the case then it leads to a big problem which is called as liar's paradox. So that thing which we will try to avoid a liar cannot tell truths. Lr always lies in all. So here is the information that we have you asked A and B and then A is uh, talking about uh, a particular kind of thing A is saying B is a name. So now this particular kind of thing which I will describe it and then maybe you can solve it in your free time. So now A says that B is a name that is the first sentence that we have in this problem and now B says A and C are of same type. A and C are of same type who is saying this thing uh, B is saying that 
A and C are of same type either it should be this particular kind of thing or you can even take into consideration B as not A and not C. So this satisfies uh, uh, that both are nights that means they are of the same type and the other one satisfies this thing uh, not A and not C you can take that also into consideration but not both of them. So, so they are of same type and all so this satisfies this particular kind of formula now we are trying to determine what is C and all quickly uh, we can draw a semantic tablox method for this one A and not B and then this is not A and B not of not B is B this is the first formula that we checked it so now the second formula is this thing B and A and C and not B not of A and C the same information which you write it here that is B A and C and not B not of A and C sometimes the branch closes even before itself we need not have to go do anything and all so this B and not B here this branch closes here itself and now this is not A and not C since A and not A is a this all branch also closes so now this A and C simplifies to this one since A and not A is a this branch also closes so now uh, B and not B so what is the problem here uh, one second so there is some problem with the representation of this one so we will talk about it in the next class so there is there is the translation seems does not seem to be correct at all so so we need to translate it properly so then only we will get the answer so uh, in this class what we have done is uh, we have talked about some of the definitions of uh, semantic uh, tablox method some of, some of the definition in the context of semantic tablox method and then we have applied this semantic tablox method in solving some of the interesting puzzles that is these are the puzzles which are cooked up by Raymond Smullyan so these are all called as knights and knaves puzzles in knights and knaves puzzles what we will be doing is you are a stranger you, go, you went to the island and then you ask them what type of inhibitant you are you so suppose if they reply that uh, based on the reply that you get from them and you are trying to convert this uh, information into appropriately into the language of propositional logic and then we are judging uh, what kind of what kind of type he is suppose if they say both are knaves both are knights etc and all and based on that information you translate it into the language of propositional logic and then we are trying to handle it uh, properly uh, with the help of propositional logic in the next class we will be seeing some more examples in the context of uh, semantic tablox method and uh, what we will be doing is we will be translating some of the English language sentences appropriately into the language of propositional logic and then we will see whether the argument follows or not.